Swiftful's blaring our podcast. Nothing is sweeter than Swiftcast. Hey guys. Hey. Welcome to episode 102 of Swiftcast. This is Steph. Ashley. Haley. And Adam. And unfortunately, first, we have to start out with some really depressing and devastating news that Taylor shared with us earlier this week on Tumblr. She posted a tweet that said, just so you know, and it linked to her Tumblr account. And it explained that she had had some concerns about her mom, Andrea's health. And so for Christmas, she asked Andrea to undergo some screening as her Christmas gift. And Andrea did it. And unfortunately, the results came back as Andrea having cancer. For right now, Taylor wants to leave her treatment and the details of the diagnosis private which is completely understandable, and it's just really very upsetting. Taylor explained that Andrea wanted us to know because she knew we would be looking for her during tour, and she wanted to explain why she might not be there as much. So while this is just horrible, horrible news, it is good to know that Andrea feels so connected to us that she wanted us to know. And the support has been overwhelming. I hear on the radio, I feel like every day, people sending out their thoughts to Taylor and Andrea after they play her songs on the radio, and support from Swifties has been incredible. So I hope we can just continue supporting her. That's really all you can do, and hope that everything goes okay. Absolutely. Well said, Steph. And I wanted to ask you guys, because I think in the past you've been able to have some interaction with Andrea. Um, Do you have any thoughts about or comments about what it was like talking to her or what she was like in person? Oh, she is awesome in person. During the live stream, I got to meet her for the very first time. I always tried to at concerts, but I never got to. I hugged her right after the live stream and I just said, I love you. And she said, I love you too. And then when we attended the release day, we got to talk to her for several minutes and Haley got to talk with her for probably 10 to 15 minutes and they seemed to have a really good conversation. Yeah, she's she's just a really down-to-earth person. We talked about being mothers since I have a six-year-old and I want to get advice from her and she's just a typical mom. She's so proud of her daughter. She likes to talk about her, but she also really connects with you. And she took the time to talk to me and about my problems and about advice she could give me as her own person and not just being Taylor's mom, which I loved. So she'll always have that place in my heart. Yeah, the first time I ever interacted with her was during the Red Tour when I got to go on a backstage tour, which she led. And you can just tell everything she says, how proud she is of Taylor. And the thing that she just kept saying to us over and over is that everything you see, every element of the show is her. It's not anyone doing it for her. She puts 100% into it and she's just so proud of her. And I think Taylor is so lucky that she's had her mom on every tour and almost every show. And I just really hope that she gets better so that she can continue to support her and to help her and be there because I know that she loves being at every show. That's great. Well, we hope that she's able to attend lots of 1989 shows and see a bunch of fans and talk to them. And uh, I'm sure the fans will be very welcoming and accommodating to her. Yes. And so we will keep you updated if Taylor announces anything else. For now, just keep Taylor and Andrea and the whole family in your thoughts and just hope for the absolute best. It's really all you can do. For some lighter news, we want to announce our new giveaway. You may have already seen it on Twitter, but we are giving away a special limited edition 2013 Billboard magazine. You probably already heard how many nominations Taylor has received for this year's Billboard Music Awards, 14. And so we want to celebrate and get ready for this award show. So we're going to be giving away this special magazine. The giveaway ends on April 26th. And the winner will be announced on episode 104. So just head on over to our Twitter at SwiftCast13, where you can find the details pinned at the top of our page. Next, we're going to talk about some of Taylor's older tweets from this very week over the past several years, from 2009 through 2013. And the first two are from April of 2009. The first one's from April 13th a great day usually, but Taylor actually had some problems on this day. She tweeted, 
I just stopped at a red light and it just never turned green. How does that happen? As a law-abiding citizen, this really threw off my day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that's ever happened to me. I've had it quite a lot at this particular light I go to. Do you just go through it? If I'm running late, yes. If not, I turn the other way and make a U-turn down the street. But it's really annoying because it's at a really, really busy intersection. I've had to wait at least five minutes, but I've never had to actually go through it. I'm guessing Taylor went through this one. The next day, on April 14th of 2009, Taylor tweeted, Taylor Hansen will always be awesome. I'm always going to be stoked that we share a name. And this is just awesome. If you haven't heard, Taylor is featured on this show called MC Icons right now. And a lot of different people in the industry have been talking about Taylor, including Jack Antonoff. And the MC Icons just released a video earlier today that showed all the Hanson brothers talking about Taylor and how she's going to be around forever because she's just so awesome. And we all know that Taylor's always had a thing for Taylor Hanson and Hanson in general, especially when she freaked out when they played Shake It Off back in August. So it was really cool to see them supporting her in this video today. I'm still waiting for a special guest performance of Mbop. I would die. If I was not at that show, I would die. Or if you were there, you would also die. If I were there, I would also die, yes. Well, also from that same week on April 13th, 2009, there were just so many good tweets that we had to include them all. Taylor was having a conversation with Selena on Twitter. Selena said, discussing love with two nine-year-olds, that's what love is supposed to be. Truly amazing. I'm never leaving Canada. And Taylor replied to her and said, Real love still happens sometimes. It's not just something we make up when we're nine. I have to believe that. You do too. Aww. And then on April 14th of that same year, we're still in 2009, Taylor tweeted, Singing at the Grand Ole Opry tonight. Riding shotgun with my dad on the way there. It's crazy that that was so long ago. Agreed. And then on April 17th of 2009, Taylor said, Getting ready to go to prom, dot dot dot, in a music video. Smiley face. So was that the You Belong With Me music video? It must have been. Yep. Such a great video. Well then, moving along to 2010, on April 16th, Taylor tweeted, Surprise guest at Staples Center, Katy Perry. We sang hot and cold and jumped up and down a lot. Katy, LA, I will always love you. And then on April 18th, Taylor said, I just drove past Brad Paisley jogging down the side of the road. I rolled down the window and screamed, run, Forrest, run. I live for little moments like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she used his own song. Exactly. Now looking at 2012, on April 11th, Taylor tweeted a picture, and it was actually from Instagram, and the caption was, recording the next album, so happy. And the picture is of her sitting down on a couch with some headphones on and a microphone in front of her, and she has a guitar with her. So she was recording something for the Red album, we'll have to assume. Yeah, I never knew what, though. On April 12th, 2013, in the midst of the Red Tour, Taylor tweeted, Best day ever. Disney with my friends. With lots of S's at the end of friends. And then she tagged Ed Sheeran, Scott Myrick, and Mallory. So Taylor was taking a break with the dancers Mallory and Scott and Ed. They went on a roller coaster and looked really fun. I was laughing at that picture because they all look like they're freaking out, except Ed looks really calm to me. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's just sitting there. <laughs> I guess that's kind of expected. He seems pretty chill. Yeah, that's very much his personality. Well, next we want to give you some news, and we have a lot of very exciting news this week, so we're going to go right into Keeping Up With Swift. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the Billboard Award nominations came out this week, and Taylor received 14, which is amazing. And so the list of her nominations is Top Artist, Top Billboard 200 Artist, Top Billboard 200 Album, Top Hot 100 Artist, Top Hot 100 Song, Top Female Artist, Top Radio Songs Artist, Top Digital Songs Artist, Top Digital Song, Top Streaming Artist, Top Streaming Song Video, which has nominations for both Shake It Off and Blank Space, Top Social Artist, and Chart Achievement. 
Wow. <laughs> wow. I got tired just reading that. <laughs> And she leads the nominations. The only person behind her is Sam Smith with 13. I saw a tweet from someone that said, can they just give her a chair on the stage so she doesn't have to keep going back and forth? (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a good idea. And so one of the awards chart achievement is fan voted, and that opens on April 28th on Billboard.com. We got this. I don't see how she's not going to win a slew of these awards because Billboard Music Awards is based on sales and chart performance. I just really don't know how she's not going to take home a boatload of these awards. You're right. And in uh, 2013 for the Red Album, I believe she won eight awards, correct? That's right. She won eight awards that year. We'll see if she can beat it this year. Well, our next awesome news Republic Records has announced that a remix of Bad Blood will be the next single. Yay! So it's going to come out to radio on May 19th, and that is just the day before the U.S. 1980 tour leg. So that's really awesome. And a photographer named Damon Baker, who lives in the U.K., has been working with Taylor and mentioned that when Taylor was last in town for the Brits, he was working on a new project with her. And this week, he released a punk photo of Taylor. I'm so excited for this single. Yeah, do we think that that photograph or that photo session with Damon Baker is in any way related to the music video or promotional shots for that new single? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely looks like it could go with the feeling of the song. Yeah, and I also noticed someone pointed out on Tumblr that Kanye was also in town at that same time for the Brits. And we know there's been wide speculation that he's involved in this song. There could be photos of Taylor and him together, and they haven't released them. Could be. I just am looking forward to see uh, what this whole remix is about and how they change the song. And if, you know, somebody like Kanye is in it and adds a rap element to it, or it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what it sounds like. It should be really perfect if he is in it, because it's almost like they're saying they no longer have any bad blood. And another interesting thing is Kanye did a song called E.T. with Katy Perry, right? Yeah. So I think this will be good. It's also possible we could be completely wrong and somebody else like Calvin Harris or Diplo, who used to date Katy Perry, could have done the remix. She was hanging out and talking a lot with Diplo at the Grammys. Yeah, it's possible. Well, our next news item is that Keds is going to be releasing new shoes next month for the tour. And I can't wait to buy them. I hope that they have that game again where you can spin the wheel to win free Keds. And I will get that free Keds deal. (laughs) These shoes look really good. They have the seagull design and they have a shoe with all the dates on them. Tour cities on them. I've got to say, after going through a two-year period where every piece of merchandise that came out was red, it's very refreshing to see this new stuff. (laughs) New colors. (laughs) Kind of kicking myself that I never got any of the tour Keds or red. Well, some other exciting news about Ed Sheeran. He was in New Zealand this past week, and he told the group that he and Taylor have plans to work together again soon. That's a quote. So that's very exciting. I was just thinking the other day about how they've written other songs and we've never gotten to hear them. I'm still bummed about that. Well, our next piece of news is another sales update on 1989, which keeps growing every week. The worldwide sales of 1989 are now at 6,895,000. And sales for the singles off of 1989, which are Shake It Off, Blank Space, and Style, are now exceeding 9.5 million. Those are some big numbers. Well, to wrap up our news, we wanted to mention that Taylor was, understandably, as we mentioned with that announcement at the beginning of the episode, a bit missing in action this week. She did take time to clear up some rumors that had been going around that she and Lord are fighting, and she said that they FaceTime with each other constantly and that they laugh about those rumors. (laughs) She also retweeted her brother Austin's announcement that he has a role in a play called Dead Man's Cell Phone at Notre Dame. And that play is running from April 15th to 19th. And finally, she tweeted to support Mike Meadows' debut release, which is called When You Need Someone. Yeah, that's really cool. I had not really been following the news about Mike's release. So that's exciting. I'm going to have to download it. 
I'm really wondering if this Notre Dame play is going to be a complete mob scene now. Yeah. <laughs> the exact dates are announced. It could be a mob scene. Yeah, you got to think that Taylor will likely attend because it's her brother and it's only over a several day period. So if she wants to go see him, she's going to have to go during those days and people will know that she's there. Although at the last play he was in, it did seem kind of tame to me. There weren't too many photos of her even released sitting there in her seat. That's good. So hopefully people won't mob her. Well, next we want to give you Taylor's upcoming schedule so you can set your DVRs and mark them on your calendars. Well, next Sunday, April 19th, is the ACM Awards. It's the 50th anniversary of the show, and they're presenting a special milestone award to seven recipients, including Taylor. So the other recipients are Garth Brooks, Kenny Chesney, Miranda Lambert, Reba, George Strait, and Brooks and Dunn. And for Taylor, they said the reason why they're honoring her is because she has won eight ACM Awards and was the youngest ever Entertainer of the Year when she won at age 21. And the trophy is sculpted out of more than 1,000 grams of sterling silver, which seems expensive. Yeah. And then it has a cowboy hat on top of the trophy, which is embellished with 4.16 carats of black diamonds. So I don't think that's an award she's going to be tossing around at her parties. (laughs) Probably needs a special case. Probably. Knowing Taylor, I feel like she'll be scared to even touch it. (laughs) But the show is going to be airing, as I mentioned, next Sunday, April 19th at 8 p.m. Eastern. So we're not sure if she will be there, but I feel like there's a good chance she could want to accept this award in person. It seems like a big deal. Only seven people. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you both. I would anticipate that all seven are going to be there to accept the award in person. And I feel like I can see them doing a really awesome video montage for her, like when she won the Pinnacle Award at the CMAs in 2013. And we all cried. That was such a great video. Next, on April 25th, she is up for some awards at the Radio Disney Awards. And the categories she's up for are Best Female Artist, Best Song of the Year for Shake It Off, Best Song to Dance to for Shake It Off, and Most Talked About Artist. Then, on May 5th and 6th, it's no big deal or anything, but the 1989 World Tour will begin in Tokyo. No big deal. (laughs) It's no big deal. I'm not freaking about it at all. It's just the tour we've been waiting for. Well, also, just as a note, so you all know, we will be covering what happens on the tour. So if you're trying to avoid spoilers, when we actually cover it, we'll give a warning. But we're going to be talking about what happens on tour. I think it's impossible to avoid spoilers these days, personally. But some people are very committed and wait until their date comes up. And then to wrap up the calendar, on May 15th, Taylor will be performing at The Rock in Rio, which will be in Las Vegas. And then two days later, on May 17th, is the Billboard Awards. And it has not yet been confirmed, but it does seem likely that she will attend due to all of the nominations that she has. And maybe even perform, hopefully. We will see. I'm hoping she'll perform Bad Blood. It just seems way too perfect. It would just kick off sales for the remix. The timing does seem perfect, you're right. It's two days before the single's released officially to radio, and it's three days before the tour starts. It seems like even just a performance of something like Style would be great promotion for the tour, and the fact that we've never seen Style performed in an award show setting, it would also be nice. So I hope she performs. Next, we have mini segments with some of the Swifty problems that you've been encountering this week. And our first one comes from at Ellie Miles 3. And she said, Only I would wear red lipstick on a sunny day and end up singing Cherry Lips, Crystal Skies in my head all day. Swifty problems. Or red lip classic thing that you like could also work. I would have both in my head all day. <laughs> our next one is from at Mar underscore Oriana 98. And she said, how much money is too much to spend on Taylor's merch? Swifty problems. I don't think there's an amount. I don't think so. Spend till you're broke. Our next Swifty problem comes from Lynn Swift, 1989. And she said, I accidentally called my dog Taylor. Swifty problems. (laughs) (laughs) Our next one comes from Tori Swift, 13. And she said, realizing you're probably going to spend over $100 on the new 1989 Kets. Hashtag going to be broke. Hashtag Swifty problems. (laughs) This is definitely a problem. That's my hashtag going to be broke. 
I just love both pairs so far. And not only the the seagull one, they have it lace up and then they also have slip-ons. So really you could buy three pairs and spend way over $100. Then our last one is from at in underscore VA. And she says, wanting to sing the vocals plus the backing vocals plus play air guitar equals Swifty problem. I can only sing one at a time. I have this problem. I try to get the vocal and the backup in pretty much every song. It's very challenging. I usually end up sounding like a dying cat. <laughs> I think that's why she needs background singers. <laughs> Next, we're going to give you fashion for the week. Since Taylor's been a little bit missing in action, there's actually only one item. So Adam really wants to give you guys a fashion update. So he's going to take it over. Absolutely. I'll handle it on my own today since we don't have Nate with us and we only have one item. But on April 5th at the Easter egg hunt where Taylor posted the video on Easter of her running around, she was wearing Saucony Zealot ISO sneakers. Those can be found for $130 and a Victoria's Secret knockout crop. And the exact black and white print that she was wearing is no longer available, but the style is, and you can find that for fifty nine fifty. And as always, a special thank you to TaySwiftStyle.com for locating these items. Next, we're going to go into our main discussion, which this week is about the Speak Now tour. We've been looking back at each tour because we want to get all of you really, really excited for the 1989 tour. So last week on episode 101, we covered Fearless, this week Speak Now, and then next week will be Red. Yay! Hopefully this will get all of you really amped up for tour. So the Speak Now tour ran from February 9th, 2011 through March 18th, 2012. And it was the world tour. It covered Asia with seven shows, Europe, 11 shows. North America had 80 shows. Oceania had 12 shows. So the total shows for the tour was 110. Ticket sales were 123.1 million. And the openers were Need to Breathe in the U.S. In Australia, it was Hot Shell Ray. And then there were some others for other countries. It's interesting to note that the total number of shows was 110. That seems like a lot because looking at this upcoming tour, the 1989 tour, and of course there could be more shows added at a later date, but currently they're only scheduled to be 78 shows. So a large decline in the number of shows compared to the Speak Now tour. Right. And I think, like we mentioned last week when we talked about Fearless, probably because there just weren't as many stadiums for the Speak Now tour. Yep, exactly right. This tour seems very focused on stadiums. I mean, I think that's really every artist's goal is to get to that level where stadiums just make more sense than arenas. I think every artist would jump at the chance to play stadiums if they could sell out enough tickets. Yeah. And here, Taylor can sell out not only one night, but two nights in many cities. Most stadiums these days hold at least 60,000 people when you open up field seating. So we're talking about 120,000 guests just in two days. That makes me so excited thinking about how Ed just got his first stadium date in the U.S. I know, and it's a Gillette, which is was Taylor's first stadium. She must have put in a good word for him. <laughs> Yeah, Ed will actually be headlining Gillette Stadium in September to end his leg of his tour in the U.S., so it's very exciting. One of my favorite memories from the Speak Now tour, just as far as the openers, was seeing Hunter Hayes before anybody knew who he was. I didn't get to see him at all. Which date did you see him at? He was the opener in Chicago. Oh, I'm jealous. I only knew one song of his at that point, which was Storm Warning, but then it seemed like he blew up really quickly after that. He did, and I thought Storm Warning was a great song. I didn't understand why that didn't make him blow up. Well, you probably all remember the set list very well, because you probably either watch the DVD a lot or listen to the album a lot, which I love having the live version album in my car. It was like I was at the show every night. I drove around with that CD. So, of course, the set list included a lot of songs from Speak Now. Sparks Fly, Mine, The Story of Us, Our Song, Mean, Back to December, where Taylor incorporated the songs Apologize, which is One Republic. And we all know Taylor has been a fan of Ryan Tedder and One Republic since way back then. And now for 1989, she finally got to work with Ryan Tedder on Welcome to New York and I Know Places. And then she also incorporated You Are Not Sorry into Back to December. 
Then she did Better Than Revenge, Speak Now, Fearless, which in that song she incorporated Hey Soul Sister by Train. Which, side note, speaking of collaborations we've never heard of, like Ed Sheeran with their songs, Taylor and Pat Monahan of Train, who does Hey Soul Sister, actually wrote a song at least two years ago now, I guess. It was called Babe, and we've never heard it. So frustrating. I have literally tried to tweet him about that, and he's never replied. I was so upset. Are we just never going to hear it? I don't think we are. I'm so bummed, though. That would have to be just so great. Yeah, I wonder what kind of sound it would be like. If it would be more similar to a train song or more country or... Yeah, I do feel like at this point it might be too late for her ever to release it. And I'll always be sad about it. But side note over, she also incorporated I'm Yours from Jason Mraz into Fearless. Then she performed Last Kiss, You Belong With Me, Dear John, Enchanted, Haunted, Long Live. Then she came back for the encore with 15 and Love Story. That set list is so perfect. She did later add ours, which was amazing. Yes, she did after that was released as a single. Did you get to see it, Haley? Yeah, Denver was the first night she played it, so I got to see it for the first time live at my show, which was amazing. That's amazing. I never got to see it. But Adam's right, this was a perfect set list. This was such a great tour overall. It really just felt magical to me. Enchanting, not to use a pun there, but <laughs> it really felt like just a fairy tale kind of show. Definitely. I think set wise and everything, I think the Speak Now tour has been my favorite performances just because of all the choreography. There was so much going on on stage that it was amazing to try to go back and look at everything. And I'm glad we have the DVD to do so. Yeah, I remember Taylor describing the tour before she started all the shows and she said it really seemed like Broadway. She loves Broadway and like Haley said, there was just so much going on on stage and all these production elements and dancers everywhere. I loved how the dancers, including Taylor and, and her singing, but the dancing itself and the videos that they had and the sets themselves told a story versus her just singing the story, which I think that's what I loved most about it. Like it had a element of just emotion and everything on the stage and then Taylor just finished it off. It really was amazing how she really told the stories through the set and the dancers she just has a, such a way of making her lyrics come to life on stage. One of my favorite performances from the tour is the Back to December on the piano, which she matched up with One Republic, Apologize, and also with her own song, You're Not Sorry. I always thought that that was just such a perfect mashup. Yeah, I love the way she rearranges songs. And for the tour performance, remember the very beginning was cool how it rained white confetti from the ceiling. So it looked like there was, it looked like it was snowing. I love that. During that song at one of the shows I was at, I was picked and brought down to the B stage. So I think that's why it sticks out in my mind as my favorite performance because that happened during that. It was such a great performance though. Not only just the way she mashed up the other songs, but just kind of like Haley said, the scene of it, the production elements, her dress was gorgeous. The orchestra. The orchestra, yeah, that was amazing. I loved how she incorporated that, like going over the bridge. I love the bridge. And I loved how the staircases had the S's on them. That was a nice touch. Well, I obviously have a lot of favorites too, but one that I wanted to mention was Dear John. That's probably my top favorite. If you don't remember, Taylor starts off by sitting on the steps that are on the stage. She spends, I would say, about half of the song on the steps, maybe even into the second half. And what you can gather from the, the DVD and what they really focus on is her emotion during the song. You can just tell from her facial expressions and the way she's singing it, how important of a song it is. And obviously, we all know the message of the song but how kind of sad and depressed she was about what had been going on and then about halfway through the song she gets up and walks out further onto the stage and if you weren't prepared for it you would certainly have been shocked when all the fireworks go off um, when she starts to hit the high note oh best part this was one of my favorites too because it's so simple in the beginning the moon in the background and you just think it's just a so simple song that it has all this emotion and then at the very end it just begins to be so dramatic and the emotion in that one it was amazing it gives me chills to this day absolutely 
I also think that that purple dress that she starts out with for Speak Now and then keeps on all the way through that song is my favorite outfit from that whole show. Oh, that's a tough one. I don't know what I would pick. I do love that dress, though. I know she has a lot of, you know, really sparkly, amazing dresses, but for some reason, I've just always loved that purple one. And I like seeing her hair in a ponytail because you don't get to see it that much. It did look so cute in that ponytail. And I also loved how the fireworks going off at the perfect time perfectly matched the lyrics. The lyrics go as follows, and then the fireworks come right after this few sentences that I read here. But the lyrics of the song go, But I took your matches before fire could catch me, so don't look now. I'm shining like fireworks over your sad, empty town. And that just perfectly matches the song, perfectly matches the stage direction, the pyrotechnics, and it just all came together perfectly. Yeah, it's such a powerful song. The first time I listened to Speak Now, when it was released, that song just really hit me. The lyrics, it's to me just a lyrical masterpiece, much like All Too Well. And so I was really excited to see this live. I think my other favorite performance of the whole set list would probably have to be Enchanted. I love Enchanted. Yeah, Enchanted is another one that I think is way underrated, like Dear John. Well, one of my favorite parts of that performance was as Taylor is changing in between Dear John and Enchanted, there was Claire's ballet solo, which was amazing getting to see her having a solo. She did so great. And I also just loved the sort of orchestra version of the song that they played instrumental before the performance started. I think this is the song that makes me, like I was saying earlier, It makes it so stick out that the choreography speaks about the song because if you actually ignore Taylor for a second and just watch the ballet dancers, in their movements, their body art is basically telling the entire song, which is just beautiful. Yeah, she really had great dancers throughout this whole tour who, along with Taylor's lyrics and singing, just brought all of the songs to life for us. It's actually funny to think that the album was almost called Enchanted. It was. When I think back on the whole tour, the line, This Night is Sparkling, always pops into my head. I had made a shirt that said that for one show. I feel like that line just describes the whole experience of seeing her in concert. Yeah. And I said earlier, kind of as a pun, that this whole tour was enchanting, but it was. That song really, even though it didn't end up being the album title, that's how the whole tour felt. It was just so magical and enchanting. I also loved just the way she brought the songs Mean and Speak Now to life, just because she made them play out on stage, just really like a play. Mean, I love the intro when she bounces out on stage and she has a banjo and the set is great. And even just the movements in the song with the leaning back. Every time I hear the song, that's what I pretty much do during those parts of the song now. Exactly. I love the sweeper right before she pops out. He was so good. He was so, so good. He was comical too. And that really was like a Broadway play or something that you're just watching him. I was thinking of the time that Alan showed up on stage. (laughs) Oh, that's right. That was fantastic. They gave her a triangle. Did you guys see that Ellen made herself appear on stage with Madonna and Taylor at the iHeartRadio award shows? That was hilarious. Ellen is hilarious. And then with Speak Now, I loved just the setup of the whole thing with the church and all the dresses and Taylor with her white gloves. It reminded me of kind of like how she performed Teardrops on My Guitar in the Fearless Tour. Just really like a big story. And that was such a great transition. She says the line, let's run away now. And then she grabs the groom's hand and then they walk off the stage down in the front and she begins to make her way back to the B stage. Did anyone else try to learn the beginning movements of Speak Now? Like the choreography? I did unsuccessfully. I got it almost down. That's impressive. Only the beginning part until she goes to the curtain part, but I tried so hard. Well, when she was on the B stage, one of my favorite parts was the ukulele. I really miss it. Yes, I wish she would incorporate that again. That was great. Like she says, it's just such a happy instrument. And of course, another song that I think is underrated is Last Kiss. I cry every time. That was just awesome. Every time I think I pick the favorite, then I remember other performances. (laughs) It's so, so difficult. I can't really pick one. Well, for me, Haunted... Haunted was really good. 
Yeah, I think the bell was just really awesome. It was so dramatic, and it had a 13 on it, which I love. In Roman numerals. Yeah. I love the aerobatic dancers just doing all their spinnings from the three bells later in the song. That was so cool. Kind of reminded me of Holy Ground, I guess. And, of course, the intro to Should Have Said No on the Fearless Tour. I like it when Taylor does kind of percussion elements like Holy Ground and Before Should Have Said No and on the bell here for Haunted. Just because it's nice to see her. We all know she can sing and she can play guitar and banjo and ukulele and piano and pretty much everything. But there she is just rocking out on percussion instruments. I also thought that Long Live was the perfect last song before doing an encore. Especially now, since looking back, that song is basically the last time they're all together. They're like talking about, you know, if anything should happen that tears them apart. And you look back at this performance and you can see the love that they have for each other on stage. I love that. Definitely. It was so great how she brought all the band members up to the front and they all played the second half of the song together. And like Steph said, it was a, a perfect way to first end the show before the encore songs. And actually, I love that dress too. Oh, yeah. And then of course, for the encore, how could you not love one, the couch for 15 and two, the balcony for love story. And the dress. And the dress. Yeah. And for 15, all of the old pictures that were on the screen in the background of all the band members. The then and now? Correct. The when they were 15 and then the present picture. Yes. Yeah, that was a really nice touch. That made me cry. I love how Taylor always makes an effort to reach the entire audience. Not only with having a B stage, but with a balcony and love story. Really, at one show, I didn't have that great of seats, but when she went around on the balcony, I felt like she was right there. And other artists don't do that. They just stay on the main stage, and they don't really try to let people who don't have great seats see them. And I've always loved that about Taylor. She makes such an effort so that even if you don't have good seats, even if you're in a nosebleed, you still can get a good view of her at some point in the show. I feel like every tour will always have that flying element in it. Yeah, I guess really Fearless was the only tour that didn't. If you guys had to guess a song from 1989 she could potentially fly to, I mean, I guess she could do it again for a love story, but what would you think? Oh, wow. Ooh. Hmm. We're all on the spot here. This is tough. <laughs> maybe Wildest Dreams? I don't see it, but maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to decide if I think it would be a slower song or a faster song. I could see it for maybe This Love. Hmm. I could also see the total opposite approach and her doing it for a fast song. Like, I'm guessing she's going to still do 22. And I could see them making it like confetti everywhere and just a really fun number where she's flying over the crowd singing it. Yeah, while well, you're right about that, Ashley, I feel like 22 has to be a dance along song. And I don't know if she would be able to do that much, you know, movement or dancing on a balcony. I mean, I guess she also for Red for We Were Never Ever Getting Back Together was on her rotating ledge, or I don't know exactly what you'd call that. You're right. That big arm that extended out. Yeah. So maybe she could do something like that in place of a balcony. Then again, well, the difference this time is that she doesn't need a vehicle to get her back and forth from the B stage to the main stage because of the long catwalk. So I really don't know. Maybe she won't do it. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe she won't. But she really loves the production elements because she comes up with all this stuff on her own. So I feel like she would want it because it's exciting. It will be interesting to see. Even just thinking about how We Are Never had the arm, Love Story had the balcony. So for me, I'm predicting Shake It Off will be the finale finale of each show. Definitely. Agreed. So I wonder what she would do. I don't see another arm happening. It might just be a big dance party on stage. It could be. Maybe she will just stay on the main stage for that. I could see her using the catwalk a lot so that everybody could get a good last view of her. Well, you know what I thought of, which now that I think about it more logistically, it probably wouldn't happen. But there's a band that I'm a fan of that for the last song of their set, they bring some fans up onto the stage for the last song. And I just thought, what if Taylor brought some fans up on stage, kind of like she did for the Shake It Off music video, just to have a big dance party for Shake It Off? It's definitely possible. I think that would be amazing. I think they could do it. I've seen other artists do it before. I mean, of course, there's always the safety concern, but, you know, usually they pick people that are seated pretty close to the stage and security keeps a close eye on them and, you know, could easily remove someone if 
if needed. So I think she could do it. I think with a long catwalk, it would be really awesome. And she actually did that once before at iHeartRadio in 2012 for We Were Never Ever Getting Back Together. Yeah, I like that idea. It would be like the music video. It would be a great way to end. Because with Shake It Off, I really don't know how she could fly around. And I don't think she would redo the arm. Even though the arm was very effective for We Are Never, I just don't think she'll repeat that. She always has something in mind. I'm excited to see. Well, we didn't mention that she probably will do We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together again. So maybe that could somehow happen for that. Have a flying element in it? Maybe. Yeah, could be. I'm excited to see what happens. I really have no idea. Everything's going to be a surprise. Well, Speak Now Tour had so many special guests. I guess not as many as the Red Tour, but they still had a lot. Did you guys have a favorite? Yeah, one of my favorites is actually kind of an obscure one. There's an artist, I believe he's from Canada, and Taylor had him on stage as a guest when she was in Canada. And his name is Tal Bachman, and he sings a song called She's So High. And I had always loved that song. And then when I got to see a YouTube video of Taylor and him performing it, I thought it was just fabulous. That's kind of an obscure one, but do you guys know that one? Yeah, and I remember that song from the late 90s. Yeah, it's called She's So High, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that was kind of an obscure special guest just because his song was popular so long ago. But Taylor has such a wide variety of song tastes, and I love that she loves songs from the 80s and 90s and just every era you could think of. So that was a cool guest. For me, I love that James Taylor came on. That was really cool. Not only was Taylor named after him, but she loves him. And along with Selena for the final night, it's just awesome. I have so many favorites. I didn't get to see any special guests at the three shows I was at. And I really wish I could have seen every single one because they were all so good. Uh, If I could pick one that I would have really liked to have seen besides what you guys already said, it probably would have been either Andy Grammer or Flo Rida. Nice. Good choices. I really like when she brings someone from the rap genre because you wouldn't normally think to pair her together with those people, but they do such a great job. I think Kendrick will be on this tour. I really do too. Yeah. Hopefully with a not too explicit song of his. Right. I mean, I feel like obviously we know Backseat Freestyle because that's the one that Taylor posted a video of her rapping part of, but I feel like that's not a song that she could do on the tour. (laughs) I didn't have any special guests that I went to. Charlie Washman opened the show before Need to Breathe did, and I thought that was really cool. I became a really big fan after that. But if I had to choose one of the special guests, probably Darius Rucker. Oh, I love him. I really love Darius. And she's such a big fan of him. I love her dancing to Wagon Wheel. It's the greatest thing ever. Well, some of the other guests throughout the tour included Justin Bieber, Jason Mraz, Hot Shell Ray, Nicki Minaj, Ronnie Dunn from Brooks and Dunn, Haley Williams of Paramore, Usher, B.O.B., Nelly, and the others that we've already mentioned. So we asked all of you what your favorite moments and performances were from the Speak Now tour, and we got a lot of great submissions from you, so thank you. Our first one is from at Swifty3S, and they said, Sparks fly. It will never fail to give me chills. Such a good buildup. I agree with that. Oh, I love the pyrotechnics. That and the intro video was so great. Every time I hear it and then you hear Taylor, it just, like she said, it gives you chills, goosebumps. Perfect opening song. And the fact that she knew Sparks Fly was a fan favorite and she made it the opening song is also cool. Also mentioning Sparks Fly was T-Swift updating, and they said, Sparks Fly, because it always seems to give me chills while watching. Seeing everyone scream for her when she appears from the fog. Definitely. Well, at 1013 said, Speak now, because I really like the choreography. The performance tells a story, and I think that's really cool. Our next one comes from M. Lo BZ, and they said, Fearless Acoustic on the B stage. I was maybe 10 feet away from Taylor. It was perfect and one of my favorite performances ever. That's a great song, Acoustic. And then for some tour memories, we have from at A underscore MCC 13, when my friend and I realized Taylor was going to be walking right by us on the floor and high-fiving her. Hashtag so many tears. Our next one is from at boss underscore haft, and they said her outfits. Wow, (laughs) there were so many great outfits, as we mentioned earlier. 
Our next one comes from Cindy Childs, and she said, seeing Tay from the pit for the first time and getting a high five after long live. Our next one comes from Julia underscore 93, and she said, seeing Taylor for my first time in my home city, Birmingham, UK. Was hoping for a 1989 tour date, but no luck yet. Well, she shouldn't lose hope. Taylor loves the UK. She does. Next, at Knee Newhouse, simply tweeted the whole tour. I agree. Good answer. <laughs> well, Eve Swifty tweeted, My camera breaking at the concert, so I was forced to just watch and not take any pictures. Turned out to be a good thing. They're beautiful memories. That's true. My battery died during Fearless, so I, of course, had to go to more shows after that. But you really do just enjoy the show more if you're not worrying about your camera. And our next one comes from I Tweet Swift. When CoverGirl surprised me with pit passes, and then Taylor came up to me in pit and held my wrist and said, I love you, wow. <laughs> I remember that. Sadie was so excited. And our final one comes from Bianca. And Bianca said, when Taylor recognized me in the crowd and gave me her guitar pick four days after we met. Very cool. Aw, nice. Can't wait to see what kind of memories people make on this tour. I think it's going to be pretty amazing. So we hope these look backs at the other tours are giving you excitement and anticipation for 1989. So next week we'll be talking about Red. Feel free to tweet us with your favorite memories, favorite performances from the tour. You can get in touch with us by tweeting us at SwiftCast13. We're on Tumblr, swiftcast13.tumblr.com, instagram.com slash theswiftcast13, facebook.com slash theswiftcast. You can email us at theswiftcast13 at gmail.com, and you can visit our website at swiftcast13.com, and there you can listen to all of our older episodes. As we've mentioned in previous episodes, iTunes no longer shows our very early episodes. They only list the last 100 episodes, so if you ever want to go start at the beginning, feel free to visit our website. It's all available there. And also, please remember to press the subscribe button on iTunes, and that way it will download the latest episode for you automatically. And if you haven't, go to our Twitter at SwiftCast13 and retweet our giveaway tweet to enter for that. Yes, it's a good giveaway, and it will get you really excited for the Billboard Awards, where Taylor is sure to dominate. Finally, next week, Taylor will... what do you guys think? Well, I have a prediction. If you guys uh, aren't familiar, on American Idol this year, Scott Borchetta has been the mentor. And I have a prediction that this coming week, we will get an announcement that due to Scott's affiliation with American Idol, that Taylor will be performing on American Idol maybe in May. And I predict that she'll go on there and do the Bad Blood remix. Oh, that would be good. I don't know when the season finale is. It might be she'll already be on tour by then. But usually for the season finale, they like to bring out big names. You're right. That could be a possibility. The reason I thought May is because maybe she'll do it when she is in between the Japan shows and the first U.S. shows. So perhaps that's a possibility. That would be exciting. I don't know what she's going to do. I was thinking she'll probably be rehearsing this week. And I'm hoping she'll go see Austin at his play and going to receive her award at the ACMs. It seems like such a big award, so I hope she'll go get it if she has the time. I think that she will be spotted out wearing one of her new 1989 keds. Ooh, that would be good. And I'd be so jealous. They don't come out until May, but I'm betting she can get a pair. <laughs> I'm sure she can get them a couple weeks early. I think Taylor will finally release a photo of her doing something on stage, rehearsing and doing something. I hope so. We live for those. Yeah, we live for those clues like she did for the album. Yes. Well, whatever happens, we will definitely let you know on episode 103. For now, for episode 102, this has been Steph. Ashley. Haley. And Adam. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of SwiftCast. Visit us on the web at theswiftcast.com. The theme song for SwiftCast was written and performed by Sydney and Chuck. SwiftCast is not directly affiliated with Taylor Swift, Big Machine Label Group, or 13 Management.